I'm Ian Thomas, editor of Front Office Sports. I'm, I'm joined here by Payne Brown, uh, president of the NBPI, Think 450. Thank you for joining me. My pleasure. So the business of basketball is booming, to say the least. Think 450, some of the work you're doing here at the PI is maybe a little bit under the radar. Explain to folks that might not be aware of some of the operations, some of the things you guys are doing behind the scenes, what exactly your day-to-day -day work is like. Sure, happy to. So let me start by giving you a little bit of background because people may not be familiar with the PI or Think 450. Uh, first of all, the name Think 450. Why do we call it that? Well, there are 450 NBA basketball players in the league and we want our sponsors, we want folks to think about all 450 of the players. And that name came about as a result of approximately three years ago doing the collective bargaining agreement um, as a result of contract negotiation, Michelle Roberts and the players decided to take back control of the group licensing rights. And when they did that, they needed to create an entity to both house those rights and to exploit them. And that entity is Think 450. So my day-to-day -day job is to figure out how do I monetize with the team of people that we have here the group licensing rights. So you mentioned that before, obviously taking back those group licensing life rights. Uh, all different player associations, unions have seemingly done that in recent years. MLS uh, Players Union did a similar thing not too long ago. I mean, what's the, the value proposition for players in, in kind of taking those rights back from the league? What, what opportunities that open up that maybe they wouldn't have had before? Well, I think the main thing is that just from a philosophical standpoint, the players want to control their own des destiny. The players want to, in this age of player empowerment, want the ability to sort of manage on their behalf where their name, likeness, number is, how it's being used, what it's being used for. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is that I think the theory behind it was that they know the value of their rights more so than the league may know the value of it. And I think that's proven to be the case, that we, this entity, Think 450, are owned by the players. We are their company, their entity. And there's no sort of divided loyalty, if you will. Everything that we do, we do for the benefit of them, and they reap, reap the benefit uh, from it, from what we do. I'm sure in, in, in a league like the NBA, where you have, it's very star-driven, you have these personalities that are you know, almost beyond global at this point. You know, in the name itself, 450, it just as matters that one or two guy versus number 449 or 450. So it brings that the entire group can benefit from something like this. It brings the entire group together. And just to show you how the players even think about it, sort of this brotherhood, each player, uh, we will share with the players or, or write a check to the players, um, a fairly substantial, a, a big number. Uh, and we divide by 450. So the 450th player is getting the same check that LeBron gets. Uh, so I, 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 you're right that it is sort of a star-driven league in some regards, but I think it's great that those stars recognize uh, and have embraced the ability to, to bring along everybody under the theory that, again, the, the stronger the 450th person is, the stronger the league is. So we're seeing different kind of categories, different opportunities for athletes to partner with different kind of brands. You know, to your point, gaming is becoming more popular, that sort of thing. What are some of the things that, as a group, the players are looking at you know, brands or even some of the conversations you're having with folks that are looking to leverage the power of, of the entire player base? I think the, the big opportunity, and we see it with a couple of our players, it's just in the content space. And how do we uh, create opportunities for players to tell their own stories? I mean, we have this tagline, there are 450 players, but there are a million stories. And we think that we represent some of the most culturally influential people on the planet. And while you know, there's LeBron who has a production company and, and KD has a production company, Steph has a production company. There are a whole host of players that don't have production companies, but they have interests that are compelling. They have stories that they'd like to tell. And we're spending a lot of time here uh, 
trying to figure out how we can be helpful in telling those stories and what platforms make the most sense to distribute them. I'm sure that makes, I mean, the value proposition of working very closely with an organization like this as a player, that increases even more. It becomes more of a, more than just a business relationship. Absolutely. It's sort of this more holistic, Absolutely. help you in many ways kind of opportunity. It's, 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 we want to be the infrastructure for them. Not all of the players, you know, are LeBron, that's an obvious statement, that, that has the infrastructure, the people around them to go out and, and do some of the amazing things that he's able to do. I'm sure that increases the amount of, I guess, touch points you have to have with these players throughout the year. I mean, maybe previously it might have been, you know, you did something in training camp, maybe come back around the All-Star game and maybe the offseason, but thinking about sort of content and really getting to know these players, understanding what they're, you know, what they like to do, where they want to go, it becomes kind of a year-round conversation, I'm sure, with Absolutely. a lot of players. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, and I think that's an excellent point. We have a, a player engagement team here. We've just created a, a special group called The Lab where we have individuals who are really focused not only on uh, what the players are interested in, but activities and events that we can draw them into to participate in. So we're spending a lot of time just increasing what I'll call the number of official contacts that go beyond just the union meetings. It seems like probably at, there's been no level of discourse higher than right now in terms of players post career, what what they're doing, trying to, I guess, plant those seeds now while they have that opportunity, while they have that notoriety. Uh, I mean, where do you sort of see right now the status? I mean, are players very focused on the idea of making sure their business orders are in, in you know, relative order while they're playing? Or where do you, where can we still grow or move forward on that front? I think there's a couple things. One, I think players of today are just much more sophisticated. And they're much more sophisticated simply because they just have access to more information. The other thing is uh, they've done a great job of negotiating the salaries with the last TV contract. The amount of money that, that one can make if you're in the league for a reasonable amount of time is, is generational wealth. And I think our players coming into the league now have a heightened sense of responsibility as to what that means. So they are focused more on entrepreneurship. They are focused more on investing. And I do think that, you know, LeBron in many ways has set just a heck of an example of how he's conducted himself, how he has built his business, how he's had the people around him so that he has infrastructure and so forth. And just like when LeBron was coming into the league, people looked at Magic or looked at Jordan. There's a, another generation that's looking to him and, and some of his uh, counterparts. Uh, so we, I know Michelle is, is, is very focused on financial literacy. Uh, you know, for so long there's been a narrative of, you know, players are broke so many years after the thing, after they are out of the league. And thankfully, I think that is becoming much, much, much more the exception than the rule. And the rule is now you see players who are out of the league and who have created substantial businesses that they're either stepping into or they're investing in early stage companies or doing different things that, that uh, again, they're, they've created generational wealth. I'm curious to get your thoughts on this. I mean, I think a lot of leagues, as they look to have players with, with big brands draw new fans, look to the NBA, uh, look to the NBA players as really the drivers of that. To your point, uh, you know, players like LeBron, KD, others that create these, have these profiles for themselves that just draw fans. I mean, what do you think it is that, from your perspective that has lended itself to players building brands like this, players to become even more outsized than the sport in, in some respect? I think it's a confluence of things. I think. There's some obvious things that give NBA players an advantage. One, 
you can see them. <laughs> I mean, they don't have helmets on, they're up close, you can see them run up and down the court. So they're recognizable. The other thing is that they, this confluence of what I'll call just cultural confluence of fashion, of music, of sport, of social media. Uh, today's athlete, today's basketball player is growing up in a time where he gets dressed, walks down the, the, the hallway to the game, and you know, two million people are tweeting whether or not, or liking it, or posting whether, not. there's this instant sort of response, like, don't like. Uh, now add on to that this whole other layer of music where Drake is sitting courtside, where Two Change, you know, is playing in the All Star Celebrity Game, where J Cole actually is going is in the building today. I think. I mean, so it, it's this confluence. No other sport has managed to either by accident or purposely take advantage of just what I'll call sort of this cultural confluence uh, like the NBA has. Uh, you know, Damian Lillard is an accomplished rapper. Uh, he's doing the beef with Shaq and I, I mean that's that's all cultural, iconic stuff that, again, I don't know that another league or another sport has been able to take advantage of literally sort of these outsized personalities, you know, in the way that, that basketball has.